when it comes to fighting games, getting the Platinum Trophy can be pretty hit or miss with little to no consistency. You can go from having a super easy time in a game like Undernight Ember on the PS3, or you can be pulling your hair out with something like Street Fighter V or Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. However, one thing that has remained consistent is how easy but enjoyable the Platinums are in the Tekken franchise. Tekken and trophies go back quite a ways, with the first game to have trophy support being Tekken 6. Since then, we've had Tekken Tag Tournament HD, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 Prologue, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 Proper, that's the one with Yaman Heihachi for some reason, Tekken Revolution, Tekken 7, and the topic of today's video, Tekken 8. All of which I have the Platinums or 100% for. Having been playing Tekken games since the GOAT Tekken 3, why is this not on PlayStation Plus Premium, Sony? I have always had an easy time playing each new installment, but Harada and the Tekken team help things out by making the trophy list more of a casual affair. And the same is true for Tekken 8. The list asks that you basically beat the main two single player modes while also dipping your toes into the various other modes the game provides. While going about said modes, you will undoubtedly attain several of the miscellaneous trophies the game has. Some are based around the new heat mechanic this game introduces, while some trigger if you do a good enough combo or interact with the stage's environments in a specific way. But one thing that I need to address before we go any further is the video quality that you'll see several times throughout the video. The footage that I had used for when I earned the trophies is going to look pretty saturated and a bit tough to look at. The reasoning why was because this game was much more saturated than I thought it was and I had my HDR on which made the resolution even more vibrant I guess but it didn't turn out to be very good when it came to recording purposes. So I re-recorded the story mode and some extra battles along the way so that the bulk of the video will be of a resolution that actually is watchable but if you do glance at the screen and it seems brighter, saturated or harder to see that's why it won't last for very long for any you know just for a few seconds but i did want to apologize right at the start of the video just to make sure no one was uh, confused now due to the nature of these trophies and the fact that you can get the trophies with literally any character it's hard to specifically outline how to get the specific trophies but i will make sure to at least show you when i got them as we go along with the video except for a few that i did miss catching on camera while i was documenting this journey like the very first trophy that i earned i didn't take a close enough of a look at the trophy list before i started playing this game as this was a game that i knew i was going to the platinum without much problem so i didn't know that there was actually one tied to the character customization and that happened to be the very first thing that i did when i booted up the game i went to the character customization mode messed around with law who is my main bought him a pair of sunglasses or something and i saved the changes when i did that i actually ended up earning the trophy you are in for it now but i wasn't able to get it on camera while most players probably jumped into the new story mode in taking eight and don't worry we were we are gonna get to that i decided on the alternate approach and went into the arcade quest mode this is a brand new single player mode to this game where you create a chibi-like avatar and fight in some arcades until you make it to this mode's version of what I imagine EVO is supposed to be like. This mode combines what was Tekken 7's treasure battle mode with a glorified tutorial mode as the game will teach you this game's basic mechanics, the new heat feature, and a couple more advanced things like tornadoes, juggling, and punishing. But the more entertaining thing about this mode is how bad or good depending on how crazy you are the dialogue is with the people that you talk to whether it's your crewmates or the arcades main opponents it all teeters somewhere between so bad that it's good and just a complete face bomb even after playing it to the end i still don't know exactly where it lands personally and to make things even more confusing harada himself shows up in this mode you you, you can't make this stuff up in any case the arcade quest mode starts with you getting stared down by Mr. Edgelord Cosplay Kazuya, who is the best Tekken 8 player around. Since you are just starting out, you head back to your friend's local arcade where you learn some basic moves. Once you do a tutorial, you are able to, to fight various other people in the arcade. 
Some of them will even net you a customization piece for your avatar when you let them know that your fists are absolutely rated E for everyone. You only have to do two to three mandatory fights though. All the others are just used to get money, customization pieces, and ranking up the character that you're playing as. After you take down the mandatory battles, you'll fight that arcade's boss, and you can move on to the next one. This is essentially the entire structure for the for all of Arcade Quest. Do tutorial, fight some jabronis, take on boss jabroni, lay the smack down, go to the next arcade, rinse and repeat. The boss fight can either be one specific person, a tournament, or a small string of mandatory fights. As for the very first arcade that you're in, it takes the form of a tournament, with most of the people around joining in. With this being the first tournament and the first arcade, it won't pose much of a challenge. But upon winning, you'll get your first arcade quest specific trophy. Congrats on the victory. After winning, the Kazuya Cosplayer shows up again and talks some S tier level smack to you and your whole crew. He says that if you guys really aren't a bunch of punk ass bitches, he really said that, just take my word for it, then to meet him at the Tekken World Tour, aka Evo, and fight him there. Because you guys aren't a bunch of punk ass bitches, kinda, you guys set out to get better and earn a spot at the big tourney. Even though this is Tekken 8's other main single player mode, there aren't too many trophies attached to it. For instance, for arcades 2, 3, and 4, you don't get any trophies tied to them. And while I could go into detail about each one, they each made my brain want to nope right out of my skull, especially those idiots doing that stupid dance in Arcade 4, so I'm going to skip those for this video. Once you get to Arcade 5, things actually get meaningful. Upon entering, you learn that the three main head honchos were utterly decimated by Dollar Store Kazuya. Since you and your crew are just the good as good guys that ever good, you all agree to train them so they can be better and give them a chance to reclaim their honor that was lost by challenging them to fights. However, the fights take place in another tournament. With this being the fifth arcade, the CPU fights are much more competent. As a matter of fact, something you'll come to find with this mode and another mode that we'll get to later is that the CPU will actually give you a run for your money as you continue on with this mode. If you aren't careful, they'll hit you with a nasty juggle combo that'll wipe out huge chunks of your health. They're no Sonic Fox, mind you, but you won't always be steamrolling over the AI either. But back to the tournament. Once you win this one and let these jabronis also know that your fists are rated E for everyone, you will get the next arcade quest trophy, a new star rising in the world of Tekken. The only thing left after this arcade is the Tekken World Tour Tournament with goddamn Harada himself as a commentator for it. The We Have Kazi at Home guy gives you a sick stare down that you do not reciprocate before the competition starts and then you proceed with this mode's final tournament. There is nothing really different here except you fight your mentor buddy in the semifinals and great value brand Kazuya in the finals. After you win, Harada fulfills all of our wishes and tells us how great of a fighter we are and we get the final arcade quest trophy. Get ready for the next battle. And although this trophy isn't specific to arcade quest, I also earned your money is my money after finishing arcade quest for obtaining 10 million G, which is this game's currency. Now, despite me only mentioning four trophies in the last several minutes, I actually earned several trophies during my time in Arcade Quest, but these all came naturally while playing and were nothing that I was going out of my way to do. The trophy descriptions for each of them tell you exactly what to do, so I'm only gonna get specific when needed. Time for the rapid fire round. That was too easy for getting a perfect victory, which is when you win a round without getting hit. Come on, just try and kill me for getting a hard wall break, which happens when you do an attack on opponent against a wall that ends up breaking it. Your fate is already decided for activating the heat system five times with a heat engager, which are specific moves that will automatically activate heat.
Behold, the fruits of my labors for dealing a 70 plus damage combo with an air combo. The, the wording is weird. It's a 70 damage air combo. Dot, dot, dot for doing a hard floor break. What a rush. Nice Legion of Doom reference for activating five heat bursts. Let the blistering sands consume you for doing 10 tornadoes, which is when you get your opponent to go wee. I aspired to greater heights for getting a character's rank up to brawler. Fear my wrath for doing 20 heat smashes. Resuming mission for performing a wall blast. Some levels will launch your character into the air if you do an attack that sends them against specific walls. I'm actually pretty strong for getting a character's rank up to warrior. Under the Divine Protection of Sirius for recovering 500 health through multiple battles. There's no way you can stop me for getting a character's rank up to Vanquisher. You think you could stop me for doing 10 heat dashes? Outstanding for getting a great victory, which is when you win a round with only a sliver of health. How do you take your coffee? For getting to the bottom of the Ortiz farm stage, which can be done in practice mode, or any mode, you just need to do a strong attack towards the fence side of the arena, and then from there, do an attack that smashes the opponent to the ground. And then lastly, sorry for getting rough back there for performing a wall bound. Whew, okay, I think I covered all of them. This may have seemed like a lot, but that's most likely what will happen to you as you play the game. Tekken rewards you for doing literally anything in a fight, and as a result, this game will honestly just throw trophies at you, especially in the first few hours you, of you playing the game. With Arcade Quest done, I went into the Super Ghost Battle mode. Arcade Quest introduced this mode to you, but you can ignore it as you're allowed to do it anytime that you want. This mode is unique because it will let the game's AI start to learn how you play with your favorite character and try to fight around that. It'll start memorizing common combos you like to do or certain attacks that you favor over other ones. It's basically using machine learning to give you a more competitive fight. And it works for all the ghosts you fight in this mode. So suffice to say, this mode can end up being quite fierce at times. Some CPUs you'll still completely dominate while others will wreck you up if you aren't too careful. But the reason why we're here is because this mode houses a few specific trophies. This mode also houses another trophy that I miss getting on camera. One of the features that Tekken 8 carried over from Tekken 7 was Rage Mode, which allowed you to do a couple specific moves when your health got low enough so you could hopefully change the tide of battle in your favor. If you can pull them off, they will end up doing massive damage to your opponent. The trophy that I missed getting footage for was the Now It's Time to Destroy You trophy, which you get for dealing a thousand damage while in rage mode. After I got that, I just kept fighting ghosts in this mode. It really does provide a fun way for you to get a good challenge while also not getting manhandled like you would against a top tier online player or something. However, with this mode, I noticed that Harada's avatar was also chilling in the underground arcade venue where this mode takes place in. And he isn't there just for show either. I knew I had to defeat 10 ghosts for a trophy, so I decided to kill two birds with one stone and I let Harada be my 10th ghost battle. Unfortunately, it isn't actually Harada digitized into Tekken 8, although that should absolutely be a thing, but a regular Tekken 8 character that's just been dressed up all snaz like. Upon defeating this ghost, I got both Initiating Analysis and Godfather for beating 10 ghosts and defeating Harada in Super Ghost Battle, respectively. After these were done, I fought against my own ghost, which is a good way for you to learn how to do well against mirror matches you might come against online. 
as the AI will learn how you like to play with your favorite character. But you only need to beat your AI once, and upon doing so, you get the Fists Reveal the Fighter trophy. The next trophy I earned isn't specific to Super Ghost Battle, but that was the mode I earned it in. One of the last fight mechanic trophies that I was missing was to do a Floor Blast. I knew what it was, you just have to do a attack that launches your opponent onto the ground so that it interacts with the stage and it launches them right back up. Kind of like a, a, a wall blast. But I wasn't sure why I hadn't earned it yet. Turns out that's because you can only do a floor blast on one level in the entire game. I didn't realize this at the time. It doesn't take away the fact that it's still really simple to do, but it was just like, it was just annoying that I didn't know that it was only able to be done on one level. But all you have to do is just go to Super Ghost Battle or any kind of versus mode. Make sure you choose into the stratosphere level. And then once you get to the second round or whichever round makes the arena change, do one of your attacks that knocks the opponent to the ground. That will activate the floor blast. And once you do, you will get the You Never Learn trophy. Once I did what I needed to do in Super Ghost Battle, I moved on to the arcade battle and Tekken Ball. Arcade battle is your traditional arcade ladder. Just fight eight opponents, take on the boss, at the end, and you're done. But what's novel about Tekken 8's arcade ladder is that there's four different bosses you can end up with. From reading the Reddit page for the game, it seems to be determined by how many perfects you get on your way to the boss and how many rounds you lose and it seems to do like a plus and minus subtraction addition thing as you progress through so if you got one perfect but you lost the next round then you go neutral but if you do get a perfect or two perfects and you don't lose any rounds then that you're plus two the four boss fights people have been able to confirm so far are true devil kazia angel jin azazel or regular Devil Kazuya. The one that I got was the true Devil Kazuya when I was going for the trophy, but no matter which boss you get, all you have to do is beat them, and when you do, you'll get the I'll put an end to this trophy. With Arcade Battle done, moved on to Tekken Ball mode. And this mode is honestly just pure nostalgia. It hasn't been around since Tekken 3, and it's particularly remembered as being the mode that you did for unlocking the true Tekken GOAT, aka the master of disaster himself, gone. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure he's the reason why Tekken 3 isn't on the PlayStation Plus Premium. God damn it, you adorable little dragon dinosaur creature whatever the fuck you are anyways while in this mode you want to get 20 devilish hits now i'm not exactly sure what that is what i'm guessing it is is when you hit the ball with one of your character's stronger attacks and it just sends the ball flying at your opponent and does some major damage to them the reason why i don't know is because even when you're doing it the game never presented any kind of indication that it was a devilish hit or anything like that so that's the best i can go off of but what i do know is that it took me about three full matches to get the 20 hits that i needed and once i did i got the my moves are way faster than yours trophy from here i jumped into the game's practice mode over the years tekken's practice mode has gotten more and more robust to the point now with Tekken 8, it really does provide you all the tools that you need to perfect the character you want to main. But we don't care about any of that crap. We just here for some trophies, dog. And first up is the combo challenges. Now I know the Street Fighter and the NVC veterans are having non-flashbacks when they hear the word combo challenges. Well, I guess that's two words, but don't worry. It'll take you like two minutes to do. All you need to do is just do five combo challenges, and based on the trophy description, it makes it seem that you could possibly do one or five characters, but you honestly don't need to do that. With each character having ten or sometimes more, doing their first five should not be much of a problem. And once you do, you get the Do You Want to Learn Martial Arts trophy. 
And although you need to do only five, I would recommend just doing as much as you can. Because, first of all, it'll make you a bit more better at the character you chose. But more importantly, you need to be doing 2,000 total damage anyways while you're in practice mode. So you might as well also learn some combos and other moves while you're there. When I inflicted 2,000 damage to the poor training dummy, I earned no pain, no gain. The last practice related trophy is a little weird. You need to practice with tips on, but to get there you have to go to the replay in tips mode which is not in the practice mode. And from here you choose any of the fights you've done so far in the game and you start the replay. And then when it starts, you want to go into practice mode from there and as soon as you enter practice mode that way, you get the trophy. This one's in the bag. Now, it was time to tackle the online portion of the trophy list. Even though I absolutely despise online trophies, probably because I don't like playing online in any game full stop, I can always rely on Tekken for not making their online portion too much of a hassle. Historically, Tekken games have only really tasked players with playing a few matches in the various modes and winning a small handful of them. Tekken 8 is no different, which is absolutely wonderful. To start with the online portion, I went into the Tekken Lounge, which allows you to take the avatar you created in the arcade quest and run around the various section of this giant arcade area. You'll notice that there will be some other avatars as well. These are actually other players, and when you go up to one and interact with it, you get an option to fight that player's ghost. For the first trophy I obtained, I just needed to beat one of these types of ghosts, and when I did, I got All is Vanity trophy. The next one I got is not in a game mode that I saw in the Tekken Lounge, but it's in the online section of the main menu, and that is Group Match. Group Match is kind of a similar thing to King of the Hill from Mortal Kombat, where you join a small lobby of a few players, and the person who wins the match stays in until they get beaten. All I have to do is just win one of these fights, and when I did, I got the Please Don't Tell My Father which is absolutely a poorly chosen trophy for doing a group match. If you get it, you get it. While doing the online modes, I got the last fight mechanic related trophy in the game, which was activating Rage Arts 20 times. When I did it for the 20th time, I received That's How a True Champion Fights. While doing the online modes, I forgot to record me winning a player match, which netted me the I'll give you a rematch anytime gov trophy. I saved the rank mode for last, even though there was really no reason for it, but I saved it for last. And like the other trophies, you just have to win one ranked match. Upon my first ranked match victory, I got the just relax, you can do a trophy. However, even if you do the bare minimum for all these online trophies, you'll still need to do a few more matches because the last online trophy requires you to do 10 of them. Doesn't matter what mode it is, doesn't matter if you win or lose, just gotta make sure you do 10. And when I finished my 10th fight, I got... <laughs> With everything else, except character episodes, out of the way, it was finally time to take on the main attraction of this game, The Dark Awakens. This is this game's story mode, and it follows the aftermath of what happened in Tekken 7. It also functions as a super dope Star Wars movie title. This mode contains 6 trophies overall within its 15 chapters. Now, this video is not designed to spoil anything on purpose, but I will be giving a high level synopsis of each chapter, even for the ones that are super short. If you want absolutely zero bits of the story to be revealed to you, turn back now. Dark Awakens begins with just pure insanity. Like, imagine the most insane anime you've ever watched, and you pretty much have this game story mode. It begins with Jin yeeting a motorcycle at a moving helicopter, no big deal, and demands a fight with Kazuya. 
He obliges, and the game seamlessly transitions into your first fight of the story mode. The structure of how this game handles cutscenes and fights is similar to how it was done in Tekken 7, but with the power of the SSD, you will be seamlessly flowing from cutscene to in-game fight on the fly throughout the entire campaign. The game also has special moments that happen in the fights themselves to give the more important fights a more cinematic touch. After the fight with Kazuya, Kazuya returns the favor and blasts Jin into the Shadow Realm, and then he tells the world that he wants them to fight and announces the next King of Iron Fist tournament. We are only 10 minutes into this mode and we got entire skyscrapers getting leveled, demons doing hyper beams, global domination, and I love it. Anyways, after the cutscene ends, I finish chapter one and get the Come Humanity, Unleash the Dogs of War trophy. Chapter two begins with Jin embracing his inner edgelord and realizing he lost all his gains after his fight with Kazuya. So he's gotta do all the training while he keeps telling himself he must pay for his past sins. Those past sins being for what he did during Tekken 6. See, one of the reasons why I absolutely love this game story mode compared to Tekken 7 is that the callbacks throughout the franchise are everywhere. And the game respects all of its longtime fans who remember the events of past games. This overarching Mishima Kazuma conflict has always played out with each number sequel, and this game presents novel ways to provide a connective tissue to between them all. This game also does a fantastic job with its fan service, which is on full display in Chapter 3. Because Kazuya is a lunatic, who is completely fine with humanity just punching each other to establish dominance, Jin finds himself in the preliminary rounds of the Iron Fist tournament. After a cheeky scene with Law and Paul, and a very interesting fight with one of the new characters in the game, Reyna, this game lets longtime Tekken nerds gush over its first bit of fan service. Since Tekken 3, Warang has looked at Jin as his only rival, basically turning into a subtle Kaiba, and will not stop until he gets a sound victory over him. What makes it so great is that this rivalry hasn't been given any real spotlight since Tekken 4 or 5, so it was wonderful to see Harada did not forget. Don't ask me for shit. Don't worry, Harada, I won't after this. Once the fight ends, chapter 4 begins. We get a little bit more color into Reyna's motivations, if you can call it that. Then Leo shows up, takes one look at Jin, and wants to lay that smack down real fast. It's all Tekken 6 related stuff, don't worry. Jin went a little cuckoo in that one, that's all you need to know. Afterwards, we get even more Tekken 6 connections, and finally get an answer to the origin of the Devil Gene. For those of you who play Tekken 6, I bet you never guess what the connection is. The next few chapters all take place in one location. For some reason, the next round of the tournament is taking place in a Roman Colosseum. Yo, is it just me, or is this scene giving me Crash Bandicoot 3 Tiny Tiger vibes? Chapter 5 is pretty long, because instead of you just having a cutscene play out for all the other fights in the bracket, you actually have to do all the fights. Now, you only have to do one round, but even with that, you're doing like five to six fights before you take back control of Jin. However, most of the fights that you do are just more fan service, which is always welcome here. The fights are usually with contestants that have long-standing rivalries that have spanned several games. For instance, we got Kuma and Paul, Brian and Yoshimitsu, just to name a few. Again, it's so great to see this game rewarding longtime fans of the franchise. After these fights, you play as Jin, and you fight none other than goddamn. I mean, not actually, but it is the newer Leroy character that was introduced as DLC in Tekken 7. And Leroy is just the greatest during his fight with Jin. Anywho, after the fight concludes, Chapter 5 concludes along with it. Okay, so much plot-heavy stuff happens in both chapters 6 and 7 that I'm not going to get too much into it as not to potentially spoil too much of anything for you guys. 
Chapter 6 has some additional characters show up, including Savina, who made sure to have her nails staying on fleek. You get it, girl. You do you. The UN shows up, what? And led by Big Daddy Victor himself, old man Drip goes for real though, Kazuya does Kazuya stuff, and his master plan for the tournament gets finally revealed. After he shows his hand, he gets to fight a big boss baddie that hasn't been seen since Tekken 6, ain't more of that. The way this game handles the scale of this guy is so much better than how it was done in Tekken 6 back on the PS3 and Xbox 360, and that's all I'm gonna say about it without ruining too much of it for you guys. Chapter 7 swoops in real quick, and Kazuya is looking more purple than ever. Lay off the grape drink, dog. The biggest non-spoilery thing that I can say here is that you get to play as Reyna in this chapter, and she's actually a lot of fun to play as. Even if I don't know any of her moves and was just button mashing the whole time. One thing I'll note here is that even though the story mode has you playing as a variety of other characters, just like it was in Tekken 7 story mode, the game did a much better job balancing the AI here and still allowing me to have fun even when I'm using characters that I've never used before. In Tekken 7, I recall struggling at multiple points in the game when I was using a different character that I've never used before like Lee or Elisa or Xiaoyu. But I almost never had that problem with this game and it made it of course so much more enjoyable as a result. After doing the fight with Reyna and watching the admittedly pretty epic cutscene play out, the chapter ends and I get the next story mode trophy, you aren't alone anymore. Chapters 8 and 9 take place in the same location, which is an island called Yukushima, which was where Jin used to train with his mom Jun when he was younger. He was told to go here by Zafina before, well, so he, Xiaoyu, and Panda go to the island in search of answers. Xiaoyu and Jin start chit-chatting, and then Xiaoyu thinks that having a sparring match together may help him get some clarity. Okay, yeah, whatever. Do that. Then Jin starts hearing the call of his people or whatever, and then knocks right the hell out. With Xiaoyu, and me, left confused, Chapter 8 closes. Chapter 9 opens with Jin finding himself in the Shadow Realm again, and he basically has to have a Prince Zuko redemption arc for a little while. But before that, a bunch of last year model jacks show up, and Xiaoyu must be the good faithful waifu that she is, and take them all out. That's honestly it for about Chapter 9. But... Oh boy, chapter 10 is back here to serve us a masterclass. Did somebody order some more fan service? This whole game, the good guys and the bad guys have been building up their armies, and the big battle is finally taking place here. Lars gives the speech, blah blah blah, and rides his bike into battle. And ooh, wait a second. Wait just a damn second. Is this. Did this game just turn into Tekken Force mode? Oh, Jesus! Thank you for answering my prayers. We haven't seen Tekken Force since Tekken 4. No, I am not counting Tekken 6 as scenario campaign mode. So this was completely out of left field in the best way possible. This chapter was honestly the biggest surprise for me personally. I believe the Tekken Ball mode had already been announced beforehand, so that was a little bit of a ruined surprise. But this, I had no idea this was in the game. And I was overjoyed to be doing this chapter. This chapter is literally just Tekken Forest mode. Well, not exactly. You see, you do mostly jump between various characters to capture zones with each person. Which just consists of you taking out enough goons in the zone to capture it. But there's some traditional one-on-one -on -one fights to keep things from getting too repetitive. But this whole battle, literally, from start to finish, was absolutely bonkers. And my little heart has never been so happy. Oh, and you can play as Reina again. That was fun. And then Kazuya shows up at the end. That wasn't as much fun. And then the chapter ended. And that was the least fun of all. But be careful while you're in this chapter, as there's actually a trophy tied to it. While you start punching dudes, you'll notice a hit counter. 
you want this hit counter to get the 30 for the trophy. Unfortunately, there's not really any tricks or strats that I can recommend. So just stay aggressive, take advantage of your heat mode, do throws, land heavy attacks that can do AoE damage, and you should be able to get to the 30 hits without much issue. When I did this for the first time, I got the trophy. I would do well to follow your example. Going into chapter 11, we find ourselves back in Yukushima, where Xiao Yu is almost out of waifu energy, especially when Kazuya comes to say hi. But Lars shows up just in the nick of time to make the save. You take control of Lars and have a little family scuffle, and then the chapter is over. It's a pretty short one here. I mean, Lars gives Kazuya a Vietnam flashback, but there's about nothing else to say about it. Back in Jim's Redemption arc, chapter 12 begins. This chapter gives you a whole lot of emo gin, being all sad, you know, I must live with my sins, bleh, and I don't deserve redemption, bleh, bleh, I'm so brooding, brood. Anyways, you gotta face your demons, literally, in this chapter, and then Jin gets happy again and can finally leave the Shadow Realm. Also, I don't, don't think I didn't see you putting June in the background in the final fight, Harada. You can't fool me with your tricks. You can't fool me. It is at this point, people, that this story gets Azura's Wrath level of ridiculous. And if you know, you freaking know. Chapters 13, 14, and 15 sees Jin and Kazuya have their final showdown. And despite spanning three chapters in a row, I personally felt the game did a good job of changing enough things about the fight to make it not feel too much of a slog, which is good. Because between three chapters, this goes on for like 45 minutes to almost an hour. Chapter 13 is the shortest of the three in Z's good Devil Jin fighting Super Purple Edition Devil Kazuya. After you best Kazuya for a couple rounds, he flies a bit away and decides, fuck this shit, I'ma just throw a spirit ball at him. GG. Jin realizes that a spirit bomb was not on his bingo card today, so he goes to intercept it. However, with it being, you know, a spirit bomb, it's a bit too strong for him. But before all hope is lost, he has a quick chat with his mom, as all boys do, and somehow becomes an angel. Wish my mom could do that. When he comes back to, he eats the spirit bomb, they go to outer space, and chapter 13 ends. Hold on, what was that now? They're in space? No, sure, that, that was exactly what I was expecting. Okay, well, this chapter has so much insanity in it that I don't want to get in trouble by the spoiler police for saying too much here. So, hey, editor. Hi. Hi, yeah, um, could you just kind of fast forward all of this chapter? <laughs> yeah, 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 it'll be okay. Yeah, there's no trouble for the trip there anyways, so it'll be fine. Good looking out, bro. After they have a fight that would rival something from My Hero Academia, the asteroid that they were on decides now to fall back down to Earth, and as it does, the chapter concludes. For the final chapter, the asteroid makes its way down to Earth in record time, and Kazi and Jin find themselves without their double gene, just to ignore the fact that they were somehow able to be on the asteroid falling down. This final showdown spans several rounds, about five to six. They throw in some scripted events in between and some short cinematics so that you can get a little bit of break in between of them, but it is essentially a several round fight. But there's a little wrinkle thrown in with most of the rounds to keep the fights at least a little bit different from one another. For instance, for one round, Jin adopts the Mishima fighting style and can do a few moves that Kazuya does. Or in another round, he adopts his mother's fighting style, even does her pose, and starts parrying the shit out of Kazuya. It's all done pretty well, and continues to build the stakes of the fight until it reaches its crescendo. After many rounds of punching each other in the face, Jin and Kazuya take one last final blow at each other, and after a second of waiting, Kazuya eventually falls, and the fight is finally over. From here, 
a lot of more awesome stuff happens, so, uh, editor? Yeah, sorry. Could you skip these cinematics for me, too? Hi. Well, I mean, I don't want the spoiler police to come after me. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Oh, and uh, skip the mid-credits one, too. I know, right? That's what I'm saying. Hi. So, after everything is said and done, and the mid credit stinger plays out, I got the trophy, Hope. But hold up, we aren't done yet. This game actually has a secret bad ending. Yes, there is an alternate ending to the story mode, and there is also a trophy tied to it. Now, I don't believe this ending is canon, especially with the effort players have to go through to get it. Essentially, you need to let Kazuya win the final fight, but only on the last round of the fight. What makes it tricky is that Jin still moves like he's a waterbender in this round, and will parry Kazuya all over the place. And it happens constantly. Stand still, he parries. Hold the block button, he parries. Walk towards Kazuya, he parries. What worked for me was to just jump in place. Kazuya will still attack you, but with Jin jumping around like a little kangaroo, he'll actually be able to do damage to you. I just kept doing that until he finally took me out. However, when Jin loses all of his health the first time, he actually will regain a little bit of it back. So just keep jumping, jump up and down, jump around, bring the House of Pain down, and Kazuya will eventually knock you out. The same final cutscenes will play out, but this time Jin will fall. And then from here on out, you actually get some unique cinematics that will play. The mid credit scene is the same, and so that when that ends, you get the trophy Despair for getting the secret ending. With this, all I had was two more trophies, and they were both tied to the character episodes. This is a feature returning from Tekken 7, but I felt that they were also handled better here than in the previous game. Even though these are all non-canon, it still takes me back to the arcade battles of older games where you get an opening monologue about what the character's motive is and then you get a really nice cutscene at the end when you win. They're usually pretty funny and I'm always a sucker for comedy in games, but I would have preferred that at least a few of them had been actually canon to that character, especially for the ones that aren't used too much in the story mode. The closest I've seen has been Fang, because he's here to become the like the Dragon Master or whatever, and he needs to beat Leroy to make that happen. And in his character episode, he actually becomes that, and so that kind of follows along with his motivation. That was why they were fighting in the story mode. But all the others seem to just completely go off the hinges with something funny. But alas, they were still enjoyable. The two trophies for this mode are very simple. You just need to finish five and then 10 episodes respectively. When I finished my fifth episode, I got the This Should Be Fun trophy. And when I finished my 10th one, I got the Power Isn't Everything trophy. And of course, the Platinum to go with it. I have to say, for someone who has all of the Platinums for every Tekken game that has trophies, this has been my favorite one to get by far. Between all of the tweaks and all of the changes they did to the actual fighting itself, to the better story mode, to the better handling of the character episodes, to the nice filler thing that was Arcade Quest, this game is just so much more fuller, robust, and more feature complete than Tekken 7 was, in my opinion. Especially for someone who's not an online centric guy. I'm not a big online person and I did feel shortchanged in Tekken 7, at least at launch, I did. But this game, just with, with 10 years or so we've been waiting for a new game, they have definitely been crafting probably the best most perfected version of Tekken we've ever had. 
and not just because of the better graphics or the ssd just the fighting itself is the best it's ever been and the trophies completely complement that this is a platinum that i would recommend not just for tekken fans not just for fighting fans if you just want to have a good time if you're curious about the genre this is the perfect game to dip your toes into especially if you're trying to get uh, a platinum i didn't need a guide for this game i already knew what the trophy like when i took a look at the trophy list i knew that i was gonna be able to get this without a problem this is definitely like a two out of ten Maybe a 3 out of 10 or 4 if you're just not really proficient with fighting games or 3D fighting fighters like Tekken. But this will not cause many problems for most players. The story mode does not have any of those, in, those insane difficulty jumps like Tekken 7 did. Particularly the Akuma fight and for me the Kazumi fight where you, with Heihachi. And then of course some of the other ones where you're playing with other characters. Very, none of that. There's none of that in this mode. Every fight is enjoyable. It, everything is perfect. This is a game to pick up if you want to wait for it to go half off, like during Christmas or whatever, because this game is coming, you know, this game out top of the year, whatever. But this is a game you will not regret buying. Fantastic game. Go out and get it for Platinum Hunters. Easy game to platinum. Very simple. Won't take long. Won't challenge you too much. Absolutely get this game fantastic game i enjoyed every second of it from start to finish and that about wraps up this game's platinum sorry it took a while from the gran turismo video i was busy trying to platinum the crew before those servers shut down in the end of uh, march or april so sorry that took too much time i hope you guys enjoyed this thank you for the feedback and the and, and all of the support on that gran turismo video it was insane to see the reception that it got. My editor and I were completely taken aback, but all the more motivated to keep pushing forward with this. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We already have ideas for the next couple videos. They will not take as long to get through, I promise. Uh, so keep your eyes open for the next one. Let me know how this one was. Let me know if the audio was better. I, I heard, I saw the comments. I know that the audio in the Christmas video was a bit off. I didn't realize that I had made a mistake with my mic setting. So I hope this was better for you guys. I would love to hear more feedback from you all. Thank you for watching and supporting this. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care and goodbye. Uh -huh.